What's up, y'all? It's the second edition of Crawford's Couch. This one's a little different, it's in person. But my next guest is an inspiration. He's an inspiration to me. He's an inspiration to so many people around the world. I don't know else to bring him in besides to bring him in. My next guest, Mahmoud Abdul Raouf. Welcome to Crawford's Couch. Thank you, man. It's a pleasure to be here, for sure. Do you know what you mean to people all over the world, on the court, off the court? That's a great question. Uh, the answer is not fully. Yeah, I, I, I do experience people coming up to me and appreciating what I've done in the league and what I've done even historically um, by taking certain positions, but fully, no. What do you remember your early memories touching the basketball? Yeah, that's tough, the first, but I could remember just in elementary school. Mm -hmm. I flirted with a lot of different sports, but it was something about basketball, man, that just came natural. I knew early that this is what I wanted, mm -hmm. and I made a decision early, I'm talking about nine, 10 years old, that I want to be the best there is. I would argue with my cousin, one of the best. I said, no, I want to be the best. And so I started waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning at that age, on the court at 5, every single day. Doesn't matter if it's thunder and lightning. Doesn't matter if it's cold. I just knew that this is what that I wanted my career to, to be, what, what, what my calling was. Where's your ball handling come from? Because everybody talks about your shooting. But your ball handling is like, it's genius. So where does that come from for you? Man, Who are you still in front of? Who are you I, I, want, I wanted to try to master everything associated with the game that I could. And so I can't not bring this up. The Tourette syndrome, mm -hmm. major part. Because it's like your mind and your body on two wavelengths. And it has to feel perfect. And so if I'm dribbling, if I'm doing a move, going to the right, I got to do the same going to the left. Right. If I mess up, I got to keep doing it. And then I'm adding to it. And so that constant repetition, constant envisioning people are there, constantly playing every single day. At what age do you know, like, OK, all the stuff I'm doing is paying off? You're like, you know what? I can play against anybody. The defining moment, I mean, I, I, I knew that for a while, but the defining moment was at the Nike camp. Mm, who's at that camp? Who, who's Michael Joy. He's talking to us. I'm like this close. I can reach out and touch him. Wow. And I'm just admiring his body, man, just so cut up. Cut He's up. in his prime. Mm -hmm. And out of all the people, he asked me to come out to the basketball court. And I'm at the top of the key. He gives me the ball. He said, I want you to come at me, young fellow, with everything you have. I said, OK. And so I get it, and I give him a jab real quick, and I take off left. And he's coming, but I run through it. I don't go straight up, and I take something off. I score. <laughs> it, it's over. He, he gives me the ball again. He bounces it. I just land on two. I don't want to establish a pivot, but this one is a little staggered. Mm -hmm. I get it. I go through my legs, cross over. I lay him up twice. He asked me for the ball. He said, go sit down. And man, once I did that, I'm having a conversation with myself. I'm saying, man, I just scored on Michael Jordan twice. Right. And I said, it was easy. And I said, my God. And so then it just took me to a whole, you thought you I was training then? I was training even more than, I was like, man, I want to feel this all the time. So you say you, you, your first trainer with the TV, who are you stealing from? Actually, the guy that I admire more than anything, and we don't have similar games, was Dr. J. Really? Dr. J was my guy, man. Okay. I watch pro because if these are the best, that's who I wanted to learn. I need to see them. Yeah, and I'm watching them constantly, man. Just like I said, taking photo images and remembering, and then going to the playground and trying to perfect it and then add to it. So I would carry that through games. And I'm envisioning whether it was Stockton or you're that person. You scored 51 against Stockton. At that time, what's that like when you're having those type of games against some of the greatest of greats? Oh, you already know, man. When you're in a zone, it, it just feels like everything's right. Everything aligns. You know, your ball handling, your, your footwork. I mean, the rhythm, the shot just doesn't feel like you can go wrong. Right. That's the way I felt that night. I just felt like, man, I couldn't, I couldn't miss. There is Mahmoud Abdul Raouf. We told you the one game suspension. There has been a great deal of controversy surrounding Mahmoud Abdul Raouf. My opinion on it, I'm not so sure I agree with the forum that he took, the platform, if you will. I mean, he's entitled to his beliefs. He's entitled to what he feels and strongly believes, obviously, and he can stick to his guns. But I'm not so sure I agree with the way he expressed himself. If you played in today's NBA, how different would it be perceived to sit during the anthem, do you believe? You know what? I think it would be perceived somewhat better mm -hmm. because of social media. Uh, then the, the media controlled the narrative a little bit more. Uh, I received a lot of hate mail and death threats, mm -hmm. but also I received just as much, if not more, support mail love, from right. people from all different religions and genders and ethnicities. 
But again, I think it all depends on your brand of politics. Okay. Right? So right. just because there's social media, it depends on what you say and how you, and how say, you say it. it. How would you advise young athletes to use their platforms for change? That's a tough one because everybody's different. You know, there's a saying in Islam that if you see an injustice, change it with your hands. But if you can't change it with your hands, change it with writing about it or speaking about it. If you can't do that, feel it in your heart, but know that that's the weakest of faith. So there's some people that they're not, they're not built at this moment to go out and be on the street and protest or to give speeches. They may have money to support causes. Right. But whatever it is, you know, find your niche and the bottom line, find out what you're attracted to and you love and just do something. Why was the time to release Stan at this time? That's a great question, man. I don't know if it was the right time, but it just felt right. I had a lot to say early on, but there's a saying in our faith that man plans and God plans and apparently God is the best of planets. And so I like to think, man, that I've had a couple of decades, you know, to, you know, feel that I'm in a better position to articulate what my ideas are. Uh, I've read more, I've met a lot of people, I've traveled. And then with the changing of, of just how athletes now are, are more vocal, mm -hmm. I just felt that this was the best time to do it. To me, you're a man's man. Have you always been this honorable? I've always been taught to be respectful. Even when we pray, to pray for others more than you pray for yourself, because it comes back. Mm -hmm. There's a saying that if you want to find yourself, lose yourself in the service of others. And there's a saying that the goal in life is to find your gift. The purpose in life is to give it away. You can't take any of this with you. I've always been taught that as, as, a, young, as a young child. Even at that young age, I was always trying to be a critical thinker without knowing I was a critical thinker right. and make a difference. I want to help people. You want to help people. I want to touch people. So that wasn't just then, no. That was an outgrowth of my growing up and how I was thinking, things I was seeing and developing strength along the way to be able to say something and do something about it. Mahmoud again. Oh, he's hot. Abdul Raouf, I can't believe that play. If you play in today's game, and you being who you are, how well would you have done this league? In today's game? 30 plus, I, it's safe to say 30, 30 plus. I would, I would like to think so. Okay. I know you're trying to get me to go. No, because I, I believe you would. <laughs> no, I, I believe I would too. I believe I would, too. I mean, I, I believe in my skill, and, and anything can happen. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking too much about it, but do I think I can average 30? Oh, 30 plus, of course. And the last question, the history of the game, if you combine a few different players, if we mix these guys together, you can get something similar to how I play. Curry. Mm -hmm. uh, Damon Lillard. Damon Lillard, OK. Uh, I, would say, I would say Isaiah. Isaiah was tough, man. Uh, can handle the rock, go get his shot. Go get his shot. I mean, he can go get it. I want you to know, the last thing I'm gonna say to you is, when I got in this space, I wanted to highlight the people who deserve to be upheld, who people don't know enough about. I appreciate it. And your name always came back to me. I don't mean just in sports, I mean every way. I appreciate it. And your name was always the one. So it's, I'm beyond honored. Thank you. You mean so much to so many people, and I hope you know that. And you're one of the coldest to ever touch that ball. Yeah, but even more than that, you're a man's man. And I aspire to be what you become every single day. So thank you so I much. Appreciate I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you even more.